I'm going to have to grab it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, saints. This is the day that he has made. He made this day just for these ladies to come here and testify in song and testimony of his glory. It's all about his glory. Right? So thank you, ladies. Great job. Great job. It takes courage to come up here and do that. takes courage. So my name is Zoe. Um, I am the program coordinator at the Hoving Home, program, program manager. Okay, I'm dropping everything. One second. That's all my notes. That's church notes down there, okay? All right, amen. Thank you. Um, program manager at the Hoving Home. Um, I have been with the home for five years. I started off... Um, an opiate addict with an $800 to $1,000 a day habit. You can imagine everything I did to maintain that habit, but God, I had a praying grandmama. That woman prayed for me. And she had a covenant with the Lord, a covenant. And that's why I'm alive. And that's why I'm here today. And the Hoving Home was a vehicle. It was a vehicle to really get me back centered with the Lord and to fulfill my life-giving purpose, what he created me to do. And that's what each and every lady, each and every trophy of grace that just stood before you, that's what they're doing at the home. So um, I just wanna give him some praise. And I will bless thee, O Lord. I will bless thee, O Lord. With a heart of thanksgiving, and I will bless thee, O oh Lord, with my hands lifted up, and my mouth filled with praise, with a heart of thanksgiving. I will bless thee, O oh Lord. If you know, you better sing. You got to bless him. And I will bless thee, O oh Lord. And I will bless thee, O oh Lord. With a heart of thanksgiving, I will bless. I will bless thee, O oh Lord. With my hands lifted up. With my hands lifted up in my mouth, in my mouth filled with praise. With the heart of thanksgiving, I will bless thee, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. Let everything that have breath. Praise ye the Lord. Let everything that have breath. Praise the Lord. Out of your mouth, praise the Lord. Your mouth. If you go to Revelation 12, 10 and 11, 10 through 11, I'm going to read it. <clears throat> then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Messiah for the accuser of our brothers and sisters who accuses them before our God day and night has been hurled down, hurled down. They triumphed over him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimonies, by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimonies. By the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. So, Father, we thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you that you have chosen us today, that we still have breath in our lungs today, that we are alive because of you today, Lord. We thank you that we have the freedom to praise you, the freedom to worship you, the freedom to adore you, the freedom to learn about you, the freedom to learn about ourselves, that we are not persecuted, we are not bound, we are not afflicted, we are not restricted, but we are here for you, Lord. We are here to lift you high. We thank you for that freedom. And Lord, we are going to use our mouths, our words, to proclaim your greatness, your glory, that you're majestic and glorious in all your ways. 
And we ask that the Holy Spirit is present in this place that he's present in our hearts, that he's present in this word, that he is present, none of us and all of you. Let your glory fill this room. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Pastor, how long do I have? <laughs> Tell me, you gotta give me time, because um, I can talk for a long time, and I want to honor order. Praise Jehovah. Okay. Okay. So the accuser, we all know who the accuser is. Ugh. Okay. So he makes you believe the lies of sin. He makes you believe these lies. That's what he tries to do. All the way from the beginning, we all know what he did in the garden. So we all know that the accuser makes you believe lies. It's a tactic. He makes you believe that his truth is our truth. That's what he does, right? And so what we do because of that is we all sin. We do. We all sin. I'm sorry, does, is, no one sins in here? Just, okay, I just want to make sure <laughs> we all sin um, and fall short. But his accusations, his accusations can't stand a trial. It can't. We're vindicated. We're vindicated by that blood. We got someone who stands in the gap for us. The words that he has already hurled down. So he can't stand because Jesus overcame at the cross. When he overcame at the cross, that's where the blood was shed. So that's why when we're in Revelations and it says that he overcame by, we overcame by the blood of the lamb. So I can give you a background for those who don't, but everyone knows because we're all saints and scholars here of the word, right? So, okay, the blood shed, that's the blood we're talking about in Revelation, the blood of the cross. And because that blood shed, the forgiveness of our sins was covered. The forgiveness, forgiveness of our sins was covered. So that's the blood of the lamb part. We overcame the accuser because of the blood of the lamb. But there's something about the word in there. There's the word of our testimony, our mouth. Word is that we have to speak that, right? So the word says, and the word of their testimony, as they did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. Get over this life. Get over this life. Get over it. Because he has, as one of our sisters says, he has an eternal life for us, right? An eternal life. And you got to love that more. So, so let's say we overcome by bloods by the blood, we overcome by the word, we overcome by death, meaning because we have to shrink drink back, we have to die to our old self. These women that came before you have, have died. Chelsea, died to her old self. Each and every lady that came up here died. To, I died to my old self. And every day I'm dying. Every day. Every day I gotta be like, you better, you better stop, girl. You better not think that. You better not say that. You better not do, you better stop. I don't know what you're doing because she comes up, that old self wants to come up. But God, so he gives us instruction, he gives us order, he gives us guidance. He's in our ear whispering which way to go, right? So if we have to not love our life so much that we don't shrink from dying to ourselves. We are not that important. That life that we want is not that important. His is, his will is. So, hold on, I gotta turn the page. Okay, there we go. So we got the blood. We got the word, we got the, we got the death part. We're gonna talk about the word. So I grew up in an old, well it's called Baptist, but it wasn't really Baptist. I'm, I'm from Boston and uh, we had, so we don't really, didn't have that many Baptist church, but we had church all day. All day, from Sunday school to prayer, to prayer again, to singing to the old mothers walking down testimony time. And they're like, this is my story, this is my song, right? So I'm just sitting there like, okay, they're singing it. And then they get up and I thought it was like, air your dirty laundry day. Like every Sunday, I was like, ooh, let's hear. She's like, brother this and this and that. And my brother did this and my sister did that. So I would like love that part as a kid because I'm like, ooh, it's like a soap opera. <laughs> like what's happening? Girl, they don't stole your stuff again. Mm. 
you know? And it's just like, wow. And Mother Pearl's just going, and I just like literally did not know what they're doing at that time is declaring. Now, some people were just airing people out, but mainly what they're doing is they're testifying about, hey, there's, there's something coming, right? So my brother that was once lost that stole my stuff, he's now found, he's now saved, he's now delivered, he's now set free. Sickness cannot dwell in him. Sin cannot dominate him. He's changed. That's what they're declaring. They're speaking it out. And even if it didn't happen, they were up there just saying, oh, Lord, pray for him. On. He's going to. And that was, that, was, that was a part of the service every Sunday. A lot of, it doesn't mean just because it doesn't happen now as much. I haven't seen it. But it happens, right? And so I looked forward to that part and the coconut cake and the fried chicken at the, at the end. But that was at like six. Now I've been there like 14 hours. I worked a shift as a child. Did not know. There's a whole lot of Jesus going on. Um, but that part was so crucial. It was so crucial to overcoming. Testifying is crucial to overcoming. It doesn't say it in the word just to say it. It's just not like, okay, let me just throw this in there because it sounds good. Blood, testimony. <laughs> like, no, there's intention behind it. It's in there for a reason. Because what we say out our mouth holds power. The power of life and death is in our tongue. Proverbs 18.21 says, the power of death and life are in the tongue. Those who love it shall eat of its fruit. So basically, what you say out your mouth is you. What you say out your mouth becomes you. We're not even gonna talk about what it becomes to others. Let's just talk about you. So if you say, I ain't nothing, I can't do this, I can't figure out, I don't know why I'm gonna be, I'm just gonna be a nobody, well, guess what? Guess what? That's what's gonna happen, right? So if you're, so you have to think about this, so right? So what you speak becomes who you are. So now you have to think about these things. Who do I want to become? Who do I want to be? Do I want to be whatever's noble, whatever's praiseworthy, whatever's just, whatever? Do I want that? Do I want to be that person? Do I want to speak with, do I want to have love, joy, peace, faithfulness, goodness, gentleness, self-control? Do I want all those things? Do I want to speak that so then I can be kind or I can be rude? And I was a rude something, just so you know. I was. I was a rude, I was rude. But there's this intention when he came into my life and he changed me around. He turned me around, right? That's what he does. He picks you up. He turns you around. He places your feet on solid ground. That's what he does. And when he picked me up and turned me around, I changed from the inside out. I changed. It was never to be the same. Never will be. Every one of us will never, once we get that one encounter, once we get that one touch, once we get filled, that one touch with Jesus, filled by the Holy Ghost, we're never the same. Never. I always say to the ladies, right, they talk about the butterfly, and people have heard this analogy. Yeah, you can be a butterfly, and you know, like you were once a caterpillar, and you turn into a butterfly, and you fly high. If you think about it, though, that butterfly can never, ever, ever go back to being a caterpillar. Ever. It can never go back to rummaging in the leaves, crawling like this. Can't do that, right? But what it can do is fly low enough to get hurt. Fly low enough to get hurt. So when a butterfly flies low, it does this little You pay attention, right? It's like ding, 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 ding. Because it's bouncing. But if it just looks up, child, it will fly. So that's what happens to us. So once we're fully changed from the inside out, we can't go back to old Zoe. I can go a little low, I can, I can rummage a little bit, play a little bit, get a little damage, but if I look up, child, <laughs> if I look up and I start declaring, I start speaking those things, I will not, I am the head and not the tail, I am first and I won't be last. Lord, the, greater is he that's in me than the one that's in the world. I can do all things through, if I start declaring these things, it happens. There's defeat that occurs. Victory, it's reminded of the word. Power of life and death is in your tongue. You could be healthy or sickly. And I'm not, I'm just talking about in our minds, healthy or sickly in our minds. 
We sometimes think sick and we aren't even sick. I don't feel good. We, we just are tired. Just get up. I don't feel good too sometimes. I just get up. But if you start speaking it, I don't feel good, and then my head's going to hurt, and then she's going to say something to me, and I'm going to get rude back, and then I don't want to work. This. Like, we have this whole dialogue that already starts the day off. As opposed to, okay, Lord, I don't feel good, but since there's a bomb in Gilead, let me put it on, and let me walk, wake, wake up with some, let me go out with some strength and some courage and fight through this day, because you are my strength. And when I am weak, you are strong. That's, that's who we, that's the God we have, right? And so then we can be edifying or we can be spirit breaking with our mouth. We can build ourselves up. We can break our spirits down. We can be virtuous or we can be corrupt. As far as giving a dollar back when we get extra change, no, that's not a blessing. He did not bless you with the girl making a mistake at the cash register and, and you taking the dollar. That's not a blessing. That's deceitful. It's corruption. Give it back. I don't know why that came out, but it just did. I don't... People were probably returning stuff, Black Friday shopping, I don't know. But just so you know, it's not a blessing. So you could be virtuous in your thoughts or corrupt, right? And in your words, right? And we can bless people or curse people. We can bless ourselves or curse ourselves. If you think about some of the things that the ladies testified about from young, there's a lot of curses going on. There was a lot of words. And I rebuke right now every word curse that has been spoken over everyone in this house. In the mighty name of Jesus, we rebuke every word curse that was placed on them from childhood, that was placed on him from teenage years, that was placed on them from adult years, that was placed on them from now, that was placed on them from ex-spouses, from children, from parents, from teachers, from coaches, from boyfriends, from girlfriends. We rebuke every word curse that has been placed on everyone in this house in the mighty name of Jesus. And we will not be bound by word curses anymore. Jesus. Jesus. Whew. We walk around with some curses over us from words. We walk around with some curses from words and they're broken today. Break them today. Walk in the healing. Whatever is bound on earth is bound in, bound in heaven, is bound on earth. Whatever is loosed in heaven is loosed on earth. And so we gotta walk in the freedom from word curses. We will not be what they said we would be. We will not be who we thought we would be. We will be who he called us to be. Thank you, Jesus. I'm not going to go into all of the scriptures about words, but if you read James, James has some powerful stuff of that, okay? Um, I do want to say, say a little bit of something of James. So James 3 has a whole, it's a whole chapter about taming the tongue. It's a lot of, lot from about 17 verses about taming the tongue. But it says, with the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse human beings who have been made in his likeness. Think about that one. The same mouth that we praise him with, we're now cursing. Now we get again to others. We're now cursing the ones that are made in his image, just like I am. Because see, they're not, I mean, I'm closer to God than they are. So therefore, you know, there's a difference. He loves me more. No, 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 he loves us all the same. We are all made in his image. We all fall short. We all need grace. We all need mercy. All of us. And so we have to be careful what we're speaking over his children. What we're speaking out loud in frustration, in anger, in hurt. What we speak out over ones, it says, that are made in his likeness. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing? My brothers and sisters, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers and sisters, can a fig tree bear olives? 
or a grapevine bear figs. Neither can a salt spring produce fresh waters. What he is saying is, you can't say you love the Lord and then out of your mouth curse his children. And that means yourself. Don't, don't get it twisted. That means yourself. You can't say you love the Lord and then out of your mouth say, I can't do that. You're asking me to go do that. You're asking me to come up here and, 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 and speak from you. I'm not doing that. Well, that, that's cursing myself. That's saying, that's actually, actually telling me, that's me telling him, you don't know what you're doing, basically. And we do that a lot. We do that a lot with, with ourselves, with, with it, things we get invo involved in, with our children. I'm not married, but I've seen it with marriages. I know with my children, I, I've said it. I have been so f infuriated with them. I have been so disgusted in some of the choices they've made that I have then spoke stuff over them. Like, what you mean? Like, I ain't gonna be doing that. You know, I can go on and on. But it's the same stuff that I did to myself. So I repeated the cycle. But God, but God, now he gives me a Godfidence. That's what I call it, Godfidence. I walk into it, I said, everything my hand touch will prosper. I will be successful everywhere I go. And that's the way, it's not cockiness, it's Godfidence. It is this blessed assurance that Jesus is mine, that I am his, and that he's got his hand on everything I touch because I declare it every time I speak it daily out my mouth. I speak it. I speak it over my children. I speak it over this home with, with the women. I speak it over myself. I speak it. Speak it. You got to speak it. I don't cover it up with the word. Come on, let me go back. Okay. And so... If we think about words having the power, right, that says life and death is in the power of the tongue. If you go to Exodus 20:13, thou shalt not kill. Just want to go there for a second. That means you can kill with your mouth. You can kill. You can kill visions, dreams, hopes with your mouth. You can tell, you can tell. That's why you got to be quiet sometimes about what the Lord gives you because you go bring it to someone and they have a whole bunch of nightmares and don't know how to dream and then they talk to you and then they're going to kill it all. Well, what if this happens or that happens? No, that's not what Jesus told me. I don't even know what I'm telling you. Wait, wait, for real. People can kill with their mouths. This newlywed couple over here, people can kill that. But what it is, is this is a union brought by the Lord. And so what he ordains, he blesses, and fruit will come from this. There will be multiplications of holy nations coming out of your womb, coming into this relationship right here. So don't let them speak negative. That's what can happen. But life is in you. A union is a godly thing. That's life. So what happens is life and death, that means we can kill. And so we have to go back to our words and how if we can kill our dreams, wait a minute, that means I can kill the enemy. <laughs> I can kill the enemy. I can kill the enemy with my words? Woohoo, wait a minute. I can say, not today, Satan, and stomp on him. I can say, I used to be that way, but I'm not anymore because I press on toward the goal to win the prize that God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. I can do that. I can do that. I can stomp on certain's head. I can do that and say I'm no longer bound. I am no longer uh, constricted. I am no longer addicted to, to everything I was addicted to. I can do that. It's that same power because I'm not shrinking back from losing my old life. I'm now going to kill the enemy with my words. I'm going to kill him. I'm going to crush him, just so y'all know. I'm going to crush him. Proverbs... Um, Proverbs 12, 18 says, the words of the reckless pierce like swords, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. So we can heal with our mouths. If you think about some of the healings, and this is my, the way my mind, you know, you have your scholars and your theologians and the ones who do the, all their writings about stuff that I don't, I don't do that. But I have my own little vision, which is kind of warped. But anyway, it works for me. Thank you, Lord. And so... I, you know, there's some things that happen when, when Jesus healed some people. I'm thinking about Jesus, right? And Jesus walks around. He was all-knowing. 
He wasn't omnipresent then, but he was all knowing, right? So he knew. He, he knew, Pastor John, what you need. He knows now what you need, but he knew then as he was fully man, fully God, he knew what you needed. But at the same time, he asked you. He asked you, well, what is it that you need? Why would he do that? Why would he ask you? Why would he ask you, what do you need? because you have to speak it into existence. That's the way I look at it. For me, because this is what I needed at the time, so that's why he brought the word to me at the time. You got to speak what you need. You got to speak healing. When they went blind by him, he's like, Jesus, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. He knew. They were telling him to shut up. He's like, "Uh uh-uh. Let him speak it. Yeah. You got to speak what you need. When that woman with the issue of blood was crawling on her hands and her knees to them, now some say, here's a go with Zoe's warp mind, because they're theologians, they were there. Um, So some say that, you know, it's because of the times, if you were unclean and you were bleeding, you had to announce it, that you were there and this and that. But, you know, I don't think so. I mean, that could be it. But I'm thinking about this this Jesus that's walking. I just like to think he just has this, like, kind of, I don't know what he walked like. I think it's really cool. No, I was like, who touched me? All them people. Because I felt power released from me. So that means when she touched him, that means I look, she already had something in her before she even got to him. She already had healing in her. Because <laughs> he told her her faith made her well, right? But he said, who touched me and made her speak? made her say what it is that she needed. If I could just touch you, I knew I'd be made well. He didn't need for her to do that. She had to speak it to get her healing. And sometimes we have to speak what has already been in heaven for us. We have to pull it on down to earth. We are walking under open heaven, so we better start speaking and pulling it down. Pull down blessings, pull down healing, pull down understanding, pull down change, pull it down, speak it, speak prosperity. All this word, this, this, it's not just, oh, it's, you know, you, you come to God, he gives you what you want. We're not talking about Santa Claus stuff. We're talking about the word. Uh, the word. See, that's how powerful it is. It'll knock down the thing. We're talking about the word that holds power that you can just speak laying in a a crack house. A crack house. And say, Jesus, get me out of here. And I mean he gets you out. If you go to jail, if you go over there, he got you out. That's what he does. We speak it. And I believe sometimes when you say things out loud, when you start speaking it, it, you you hear it. So it opens up more gates, right? So it's your ear gates. So you're speaking. And now are you speaking it, you're declaring it. Now you're hearing it. When When the kids are counting in school and doing ABCs and songs, they're not like, thank you, you just did the ABCs. That was really great. Yes, A, B, C, D, F, G. Like, they have to do that to hear it, to becomes inside. Even when we read the word, read it out loud. There's power in reading it out loud. Read it out loud in your alone time. Read it with power. Read it with, read it with belief. Believe everything that's in this word is going to come through, that it's going to come to pass and believe it as you're reading it, and speak it. Speak it over yourself. Psalm 121 was spoken over my life. That's what my grandmother did. I mean, I I ran reckless. I did. But there was a foundation, because when you train up a a child in the way they should go, when they get older, they will not depart. That's a real word. I'm a living testimony of that word from wanting to go get chocolate cake for them, or coconut cake for them to finish, hurry up and finish praying, not caring, not thinking none of that word was seeping into me, to my grandmother praying 121 over me, to me being here today. 
That's a word, and it's real, and it's from speaking over it. I'm pretty much done, but um, I just... <laughs> I, I just feel this strong sense about words that have been spoken over us that has held us bound. Words that we have spoken over ourselves, words that, we have, that have been spoken over us. And it's, it's an it's a, it's a urge that I have for you, especially with children. It's been on my heart with that, with children, that we are very cautious of our words that we're very careful and, and intentional about what is coming out of our mouths in all times, right? Because if we start with love, then it all kind of flows, right? Because the fruit of the spirit is, starts with love. I mean, it kind of goes in order. It's not just, again, happenstance. I think love begets joy and then peace. And, okay, anyway, so self-control comes last. You have to go through all these other things to get self-control. You just don't have self-control. We just don't get up with self-control. Like, okay, I got self-control. It's great. And then we wouldn't need them. Self-control is something that the spirit gives us. But it comes through a process of other things. I control myself because I love you. Honestly. I love him. Therefore, I love you. Therefore, I can control my mouth when I speak to you. Despite the circumstance. I love him. Therefore, I love me. Therefore, I can control my mouth about what I speak to me and speak into my life, despite what I see. It may not look like what he promised me, but it's coming. So I have to speak it. He says, speak to the rock. Not hit it. That's a whole other story. Speak to the rock. So speak it. So it may not look like water's going to come out of this rock. It may not look like I'm ever going to get out of this situation, that I'm ever going to be able to stand on my own two feet, that I'm ever going to get married, that my children will ever rise and call me blessed. It may not look like that I'll ever not be addicted, that I'll ever be able to sing, um, sing in church, that I'll ever be able to read well, that I'll ever be able to make a living for myself, that I'll ever be able to have a home. That I'll ever, it, may, it may not look like that. Speak it. Speak it. My, my children will never be saved. My brother will never be saved. Speak, speak it. He will. He is. He is. My son, I, I just really quick, my son, my oldest son, will be 25 in April. Yeah, I know, right? I look good, don't I? Thank you. Amen. So he'll be 25 in April. And so what happened is that, <laughs> so um, there was a lot of hatred he had. to Hate is a good word. Because he, he grew up seeing my mother and, my, and, my, and my, uh, me hate my mother and her, dis, her hate me too. He grew up seeing that type of life. And when he found out that I was an addict, he was, he's been a football player since he was nine, always away from home, always in camps, always in schools, always in prep schools and boarding schools and all this stuff, right? So he's been away and um, he finds out he's in school, he finds out I'm an addict. He has all this anger. He's a young man. So much is happening. There, there's killings going on of young black men. There's all this stuff. He was just struggling as, and that he just was mad and at me. And he became angry at the world. All this talent, knowing the Lord, growing up, had this relationship with the Lord, amazing relationship. He had, but growing up, all this talent, all this anger, mad at the world, the world's on his shoulder, he hates everyone, he's getting in trouble in school now, on a football scholarship, doing all, I didn't know what else to do. So I just prayed in the spirit and declared what he was. Makai is a child of the most high God. Makai is the head and not the tail. Makai is meek. Makai will inherit the earth. Makai will do work for your kingdom. Makai will speak for you. Makai will preach for you. Makai will love all. Makai is all, will be all. Makai will do all things through you. Like I started just saying it. Those are, I didn't say change him, make him the, I said who he was. I spoke who he was. And this boy was getting into a lot of stuff. And then August 5th, of 2021, he got baptized, gave his life to the Lord, changed his life over in school, right? The boy's doing TikToks talking about, and did you know that the Lord said, yeah, I'm like, okay, wait a minute, no shirt on. So I'm like, wait, what's happening here? 
talking about the Lord, no shirt, but you know, okay. Um, football player, so whatever. Um, I've been fighting, and now he's gotten, I'm, this first time I just found out yesterday, he's gotten signed to the CFL. He's going to the Canadian Football League to play football. He's going to get paid to do what he wants. He's fought for this. And he, the first thing he said was, thank you, Lord. But he, it was spoken over him because it didn't look like that two years ago. It looked like all oh, this was about to go downhill. And I could have been like, you know what, it's my fault. I was a drug addict, and I did this to my son. And the Lord said, nope, nope, we're going to declare victory over this family. And that's what happens. So think about the words. I urge you to think about the words that you speak over your children, over your lives, over others, and, and really that we walk in this freedom from words that have been put over us, words that have been spoken over us, that is heavy to just really walk away from it that we're broken from it, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you. Let's stand together. I'm going to ask our musicians to come. Thank you. Thank you, Zoe. Thank you. As your name means there, you spoke life. Spoke life, right? Life and death and the power of the tongue, as you said there from Proverbs, and how true it is, how true it is. Some of you today, this is, this is hitting like a bullseye for you uh, because you've been maybe on one side or the other of this. You've been that person either who has just been pounded and broken and pounded and broken by the words of others. As the team just begins to just minister to the Lord and minister to us in song and the musicians begin to play, in just a moment, I'm, I'm just going to let you come and you just say, you know what, I just need to spend a few moments just talking to God, just letting the Lord just pour his spirit into me today and bring a healing. Maybe he was already doing that throughout this service today, but let, let this word, let this word take root today. Let it take root. And some of you today, you need healing deep down and, and God's just speaking to your hearts. Others of you would honestly say, you know what? I've been that person. I've been that parent, maybe that teacher, maybe that coach, maybe just that, that adult or, or peer or whatever it is, I've been that one that has used my tongue not to bring fresh, healing, soothing water, but to bring that salt, to bring that wound, to bring those hurtful words. And today I need, I need forgiveness. I want to make a turn. And I want to ask God to help me. And it might have been the people that have been closest to you. And again, we know that saying that says hurt people hurt people and oftentimes we're the product of something that we just begin repeating and, and repeating so I just want to let this time just be open right now you'd say Pastor John that's, that's me I fit into this today what Zoe's talking about I fit into that and maybe those of you that need healing today the wounds the wounds let today maybe just be a first step it's going to be a process it's going to be a process, but today, let today maybe even be a first step or another step in that healing process. And you just want to begin to come. You just want to begin to come right now, just saying, yep, I need healing today because of some wounds, some words, some things that have been spoken over me. I'm going to ask you to be bold enough and humble enough just to begin to come right now. Men, this isn't just for women. Please don't get it wrong today, men. Don't miss it today. This is for you just as well, young men, young men, old men. You're coming right now just saying, yep, I'm in that today. Others of you coming right now just saying, it's been my lips, my words, rather than blessing my children, my sons, my daughters, I've been guilty of cursing them, of speaking death over their lives, of constantly saying, what's your problem? I'm so disappointed in you. You're such a letdown. You, you, can, you see what I'm saying? Some of you, that's been your words. You've made it more important in your family that they get that A or A plus or 4.0 than that, than that they know that you love them. That you're proud of them. I'm going to call you to come right now. Just saying, that's me. I need to make a turn today. God, forgive me. God, forgive me. 
God, forgive me. We were just talking yesterday, some of us, those serving even in positions as teachers, administration in schools, being those at times that speak death rather than life into students. You'd say, that's, that's me. It can happen right in the walls of the church. You'd say, that's, that's me. I've done that. Let me remind you of some of the most powerful words that you can declare. You know, the Bible says if we confess with our mouths, Jesus is Lord, and believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead, we will be saved. That means rescued from the penalty, the price of our sin. Jesus made that available for you and me. Some of you today, let this be the first day maybe that you make a turn back to God the Father and He welcomes you home today and you come because the Bible declares that if you confess your sins, He's faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Some of you need forgiveness today. Would you just begin to come? Would you begin to come right now? Would you sing that chorus he's playing right there? God really loves me. Hallelujah. Come, you need forgiveness today? Would you come right now? You need healing today? Deep wounds today? Come. God really loves us. God really loves us. Did you hear the word today? It doesn't matter where you've been or what you've done. Let today be a new day. Oh, praise my soul. Let today be a new day. God really loves us. He loves you. He loves you. God really he loves, loves you. Us. Hallelujah. We are not alone. God really loves us. God really loves us. Hallelujah. Oh, praise my soul. God really loves us. Receive it today. Receive it today. God really loves us. Thank you, Lord. What a father. What a friend. Receive it today. What a savior he is. Tell him, Jesus, I receive your love. What a father. You died on the cross what for me. A friend. You rose from the dead for what me. What a savior he is. I receive your forgiveness today. What a father. I receive your healing from my broken what heart today. What a savior he is. I speak your name, the name that's above every what name. A the only name by which I can be rescued, I can be saved. What a savior he I speak the name of Jesus. What a father, what a friend, what a savior he is. Thank you, Lord. What a father, you, what a friend, what a savior he is. Thank you, Lord, that in spite of the words that have been spoken over us, in spite of the things that have been said to us or about us, in spite of the things that we ourselves have said about ourselves or about others, so oh God, thank you. Thank you, Lord God, that nothing could separate us from your love. Nothing, oh God. God, thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you that we're sin did abound, grace did all the more abound. And we receive your grace, your mercy, your healing, your forgiveness. We receive it today in our lives, oh God. Thank you, Jesus, for loving us so much in spite of us. You loved us. 
we receive your love today. We receive your forgiveness by grace today through faith. We put our trust in you today, Jesus. Would you tell them, however you fit into this today, I'm putting my trust in you, Jesus. I confess you as my Savior, as my Lord. Thank you that he who the Son sets free is free indeed. I'm free of condemnation. I'm free of guilt. I'm free of shame. I'm free. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, I am a child of God with the hope of heaven, with my sins forgiven and my past behind me, that I'm a new creation. Old things have passed away. All things have been made brand new. Thank you, Lord. We say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let me remind you, church, we have a very, very vital, critical ministry to this church called Soul Care. And while coming to this altar sometimes can be just that once and for all life-changing moment, what we have found is it's often a process. It's often a process. And the ministry of Soul Care is something that we have to help us not simply you but to help us as believers as those who are on journey wherever you are in this journey of faith to move forward and to overcome those things that have often bound you and me from the past things like those words those wounds from the past please you can tap me on the shoulder you, you can tap Kivian, Maria. You can tap somebody. You can reach out to the church. Reach out to somebody and say, how do I find out more about this soul care ministry that Pastor John is speaking about? Let us know. We'll, we'll, we'll put you in contact with all the right people and all the right, all the right parts of that. Now, ladies, we're going to ask you to do something really um, that would just be a blessing for us as a church. Um, we would love for you ladies to, to come and just to stand across the front here. Uh, you can face me. You can face whichever way. And would you just allow, you could spread right across. Would you just allow our ladies particularly come all the way across here? I'm going to ask our ladies from the church, leaders. Thank you. Just spread it right across here prayer team this is um, a time for you uh, leaders of the church just come and we just want to pray for you today folks let me just let you know of one other thing after we finish praying today for these ladies we want to take God's word very seriously that it's not just simply a hey we want to bless you in prayer but We'll just stop there. We want to do something tangible for the hoving home. And if there's anything that we've seen this church do time and time again, especially in most recent weeks, is get behind the opportunities to be able to be a blessing to others, not just spiritually, but tangibly. And so in just a moment after we pray for them, please don't exit out those doors without saying, I want to do something. Whatever God would lay on your heart, you can do it electronically and just put in your electronic donation. You can put in there, Hoving Home. But we're also going to have a basket here in just a moment before you exit out those doors just to be able to do something tangible. However God would lead you. No arm twisting or pressure from this pastor. But I certainly want to take very seriously our opportunity that God gives us to give praise to Him and to see the work of the Hoving Home continue to go forward. We want to pray for you, ladies. I'm going to ask even more women from the church to come down right now and to get behind these women. More women, young adults, young women, women of all ages, you're saying yes. Yes, you're a part of this church here. You're saying yes, I'm coming behind, just laying a hand on these ladies' shoulders. That there would not be one woman who would be standing here without having somebody behind her. There would not be one woman who would not have at least one woman or more.
begin to pray into them. Ladies, praying for the lady that you are laying hands on there. Begin to speak God's truth, God's word over their lives. You could certainly ask, saying, how can I pray for you? You could certainly ask it. Just begin to speak your word, God's word. As God would put his word on your heart, a message for them, just begin to speak out that word. right now by your Holy Spirit you're imparting good gifts right now you're imparting good gifts right now to your daughters every daughter of the King we bless we bless we bless daughters we bless you today your Heavenly Father loves you we bless you in the mighty name of Jesus Receive the truth of God's word over your life today. We speak blessing and honor. Hallelujah. Lord, be glorified through your daughters. You will shine like a city on a hill. You will shine. You will shine. You'll be salt and light. You'll radiate for him. You'll radiate for him. We bless in the mighty name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus receive the power of the Holy Spirit today and be his witnesses be his witnesses hallelujah hallelujah you'll overcome by the blood of the Lamb by the word of your testimony thank you Lord you're doing it in our midst today you're doing it, oh Lord, in our midst today, oh God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Be glorified, Lord Jesus, be glorified. family would you just begin to come and bring your offerings this is all for the hoping home this is to continue to see ladies lives transformed by the power of Jesus would you just begin to come make your way if you're making a check out just make it out to the church just right on there holding home or anything in this basket we know it's, it's for the hoping home what a father what a friend what a Savior, He is. 